Angie McLaughlin, and we, we want to keep you in the know for COVID-19. As you know, we've been celebrating Lady Narlene all week long for Mother's Day and her birthday. And we finished up yesterday by walking with her in the World Vision 6K for Water. We just got to do it with Angel. We did the World Vision 6K Global Walk for Water. So we had our children that we sponsored. You see my child? He's right here. We sponsored him today. We sponsored Pop's child. Mom got hers on. We had kids that we wanted to sponsor to help them to get clean, drinkable water. So that's what we did. We did 6K. That's how far they have to walk to actually go get clean water. And then it's not even clean once they get there. Did they have to purify? Let me see your kid on the back of your shirt. This is this is the kid that she's from. His name is Alonso Mali, and then I have a kid from Swaziland. So we did that walk today for them. Make yeah. donations per every step, and uh, hopefully they're going to be blessed. And uh, we'll do our part. Uh, we do have a lot of people out here. I won't turn the phone around right now because social distancing is a must for us, and I must demonstrate that at all times. And I'm grateful to God for it. All right. Love y'all. Peace. And so many of you signed up to join the team and came out to walk with us. We surpassed our goal and were able to provide at least 40 families in need with clean water. We wore our shirts and our bibs and showcased our children that we were sponsoring. And it's such a blessing to be a blessing. Hey. Man, and keeping in line with being a blessing, we want to make sure that you have all the tools you need to be prepared financially to be a blessing at any time. We are reconnecting once again by revisiting the How to Be a Good Steward of Credit Code Red Workshop coming up May 23rd at 9.30 a.m. That's right. So you can register today online for this insightful Zoom workshop. And remember, you can listen in at any time to the Code Red Talk podcast with Lady Narlene on any smart device. Fresh content and new episodes are uploaded every Monday for your listening pleasure. We always want you to know there are several ways that you can stay connected with us. From the podcast to our website, tphim.org, our Facebook and our Instagram pages, as well as our YouTube channel, TPHJax, or email us at info at tphim.org. And while we are engaging so heavily now in this virtual space and time, we need to send a call out over the airways for those who are gifted in the areas of digital marketing, public relations, and or social media. We are in the process of developing a strong team to help us progress in and out of the kingdom, and we need you. So connect with us today at info at tphim.org or inbox us on our platforms at tph. And please don't worry if you're still not completely one with this whole digital transition with online giving and access. You can still send tithes and offerings via check to our mailing address at 5119 Normandy Boulevard, 32205. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Tiffany Patrick. And I'm Angel McLaughlin. And, and you are now in the know. To get more connected, Follow us on our social networks. Just type TPH Jacks on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Join the social experience. Like, follow, and stay connected. The world as we know it is changing. The signs can be seen everywhere, and they all point to the end of days. The elephant in the room. The elephant in the room 
is that thing that's impossible to just overlook. So the times that we're living in right now, of course, are apocalyptic times. We all need answers, and we all need a word on this matter. It's there, and everyone can see it, but nobody wants to acknowledge it. Bishop McLaughlin is taking us to God's word to help answer today's questions. This generation now sees what pestilence of biblical proportions look like. But now we have empirical evidence now. We have direct contact. We have our own experience right now with pestilence of biblical proportions. So we have to be very careful that we don't overspeak. We have to be very careful as we walk through these scriptures that we don't assign certain things to certain people that's not accurate because so many people will fall for that and so many false Christ, he said, remember, and false prophets and so many deceivers will come and they'll say over here and over here, Jesus said, don't go there. What we need to do is go to the word of God. Join Bishop McLaughlin for the Revelation series now exclusively on Friday night at 7 p.m. on Facebook YouTube and our website as we continue the Apocalypse series. The book of Revelation is a victorious book. Say it at home. The book of Revelation is a victorious book. Get the insight, get the facts, and get the revelation. On average, it takes five months to lose the weight you've gained during the holidays. Before the weight gain gets out of control, get a membership at Temple Builders. We have monthly plans that start at $29.99 per month. You'll love our amenities. We have classes, a host of free weights, and various cardio machines that will have you sweating and shedding those added pounds in no time. Plus, we have a heated pool that is open year-round. So take a dive in our awesome gym. For more info, call 394-0856 and get Temple Fit. Thank you for logging on for our virtual worship experience here at the Potter's House International Ministries, located in the bold city of Jacksonville, Florida. And although we have been corporately separated, the church is still alive and well. Families are getting closer, living rooms have become sanctuaries, and your digital devices have become instruments to connect to God. Ministry continues beyond the four walls of the church, as we continue to meet the needs of our local community, blessing nearly a thousand frontliners with free meals through our COVID-19 relief fund and feeding hundreds globally through our India Global Missions. Many of you have been blessed and felt the presence of God through our live streams on Facebook, YouTube, and our website. And we still need you to help us reach more. So share this feed now because our world needs the word like never before. Keep giving because your gifts help us continue kingdom ministry. Remember, you can give at any time during this virtual service. There's text giving. Just text the word give to 904-601-1695. You can give online at tphim.org or through our Ministry One app or mailing your gifts to TPHIM at 5119 Normandy Boulevard, Jacksonville, Florida 32205. Once again, we thank you for your gifts and we thank you for tuning in. Now here to welcome you is our pastor and founder, Bishop Vaughn and Lady Narlene McLaughlin. Hello everybody, this is Bishop Von McLaughlin. We're so happy to be coming to you this way, always giving you a warm welcome, always letting you know that we appreciate you tuning in. My wife is the boss and she's going to give you an invitation and just say hi to you as well. Hello audience, God bless you. We are so excited to be with you again here at the Potter's House. We hope you're enjoying the broadcast and we thank God for you tuning in. Uh, we hope you continue to pray for us as you're praying for your own household and the rest of the world at this time. And we're just looking forward to seeing your uh, face back in the place one day. So we love you, those of you who are visiting, and uh, we've not yet met you before. We long for you to come out and visit us when we're back open and running uh, in the physical. So we appreciate you. We love you. God bless you. And now we're inviting you and telling you welcome and all this kind of stuff. But thank you for inviting us into your homes. And we thank you that you <laughs> make us feel so welcome. So, hey, stay tuned, uh, call somebody, tell them that the Potter's House International Ministry is on the air, share, hit the share button, share a link if you're on YouTube, let somebody know, family and friends, that there is a word from the Lord. Amen.
Therefore I was glad when they said unto me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. And I just want to know, is there a couple of people that are at home or on stage or in the tech booth or around this building that are glad to be in the house of the Lord? Well, if you're glad, why don't you start showing your gladness by giving God a radical praise, by putting your hands together, by waving your hands, by celebrating God for his goodness. We're glad just to be able to come into your home to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the saving knowledge of our Lord, the healing knowledge of our Lord. And we're praying that God continues to move and sweep through your house. And we just know that God is going to move here. So we want you to connect with us socially, digitally, through Facebook, through YouTube, and just connect with us so that we can see the hand of God sweep through our city, sweep through our nation, sweep through this world. We're ready for God to move. Are you ready for God to move? Are you ready to give God the highest praise? Well, go ahead and start shouting now. I'll give God thanks for his mercy endures forever. Phil, are you ready? Javon, are you ready? Are you ready? Let's start worship here at the Potter's House. It's amazing how we've gone out the other show Woo! And how we hardly say his name anymore And I think it's strange how we love to jump and shout But never want to tell the world what it's about Thank you, God. I'm amazed at the one who gave his life. It's not the feature of every single night. And I think it's sad how the man who paid the price is being drowned out by all the flood and light. I like this part right here. Come on, sing. Let's put the attention. Come on, sing. Back up on the sun. Back up on the sun. He is the one who died for us. Everybody sings. Hey. Let's put the attention. Back up on the cross. Back up on the cross. Somebody say back up on the Lord. Back up on the Lord. He is the king. He's why we Now lift it up in this way. Put the attention on Jesus. Let's go. Everybody say cause That's where it belongs Put the attention on Jesus yeah. Everybody say yeah. Yeah, yeah Put the attention on Jesus Let's go now Hey, hey, let's go now Cause That's where it belongs Put the attention on Jesus Everybody say yeah Let's take it out right here We declare this say I be lifted up from all the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. I be lifted up from all the earth. Come on, I need to hear you singing. Just a little bit louder. I be lifted up from all the earth, I'll draw all men. Just a little bit louder. If I be lifted up from all the earth, I'll draw all men unto me.
he's been that good to us and God we want to put all the attention on you we want to focus everything that we have on you for you the one that has brought us out for you the one that is bringing us out of this season it is all because of your hand it is all because of your work it's all because of your plan we put the attention on you why because you have already made a way for us and we thank you God standing here not knowing how we'll get through this test Woo! yes God but holding on to faith you know best how many was holding on out there yeah and nothing can catch him by surprise you got this figured out as you're watching us now but when it looks as if we can't win come on somebody say you wrapped us in your arms and stepped in yeah and everything we need you supply and you've got this in control because now we know that you you made a way because when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you you made a way and we're standing here only because you made a way So now we're here. Ha! Thank you, God. Looking back on where we come from. Yeah. And it's because of you, ain't nothing we've done. Yeah. To deserve the love and mercy you've shown. But your grace was strong enough to pick us up. Cause you, you've made a way. Come on, say when our backs were, when our backs were against the wall, and it looked as if it was over. Oh, you, you made a way, and we're standing here, and yeah. we're standing here, only, only because you made. Come on, sing it again. You.
and it's gonna work in your favor and it's gonna be all right late in the midnight hour god's gonna turn it around it's gonna work in your favor it's gonna be all right say. somebody say, I see you do it again. Come on, if you're out there, say, I see you do it again. I see you do it. I see you do it again. Over and over and over and over and over. Over and over and over and over and over. work for me but he works for me because he know I can't do it by myself he know I don't have the strength to do it on my own with his love through his blood he has worked it out I was once an enemy and he made me his friend by the expense of his own blood Woo! if you out there I need you worshiping I said so, but because of who he is, because he keeps over and over you, you keep working for me over and over you, you keep working for me, you keep working for me. listen over the media and over the propaganda and over this and over that he's still working for you Shh, listen close he's still working for you Woo. lift your hands and bless his name 
He's still working. And he's working. <laughs> and he's turning it around. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Something. God is doing something. God 
God is doing something right now. He is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something right now. He is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing Turn it around. Turn it around. Everybody. God, turn it around. God, turn it. Oh, oh, oh. God, turn, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. And that's the word of the Lord. Even in the midst of this pandemic, hopefully as it draws itself to an end, we've been saying and we've been believing for God to turn this thing around from the day that this thing arrived and I believe that if it's going to cease it's because God's going to do it God's going to turn it around so Father we thank you today we thank you for this gathering we thank you for this moment this worship we thank you God for your presence in the midst of your people you've never left us and Father God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we decree and declare that you will never leave us we agree with your word that you'll be with us even until the end of the age and not only just be with us but you'll protect us and lead us and guide us you'll hold us in your mighty right hand and so father we thank you for all that you've already done for all that you're doing you're going to do we just see you we see you you over everything and we bless you because you're sovereign God and we need you like we've never needed you before so thank you for the word thank you for opportunity to worship thank you for an opportunity to praise you even right now father our hearts praise you our hearts reach out to you and we love you and we honor you in Jesus righteous name thank you for those who are watching via the internet those who are on Facebook those God who are on YouTube I thank you father for them and bless their households right now and turn it around in Jesus name God turn it around hallelujah Oh God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. Glory be to God. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord. Come on, like you mean it. Come on. You might hear some people, you might hear a few more noises, a few more voices today than normal in the Potter's House International Ministry. Today, uh, as we transition back into our sanctuaries, I have a small group of people, an extended group of people of leaders and faithful members of our church that are here for this test run of us coming together and worshiping together. It feels good. It's just good to be back in the house of God. maybe a hundred plus people and God has blessed us um, they get a chance to see what I have to do and lights out cameras on speaking to um, people in in cyberspace um, speaking and preaching into a camera um, people get to trickle in every now and then and see what it takes to make that happen uh, it's not business as usual it's not normal 
but it is what we have to do to make an adjustment to be able to reach as many people as we can so I'm grateful to God you can be seated and I'm blessing God today those you that are home again share this broadcast even those you that are in the sanctuary with me pull out your phones go to Facebook and just start a share a watch party so that your friends will know where you are and what you're hearing today and what you're experiencing today so even if you're in here right now just take your phone out of your pad out and just hit it and just share with somebody a family member a friend your group of people that you influence and you impact if it's good for you it ought to be good for them so I'm grateful to God uh, for what he's doing what he's going to do and what he's going to even say to us today I believe this is a strategic hour this is a the moment that many of us have been waiting for I believe that it's our time and I believe that God has set us up for greatness 2020 has come to test us to get the butter from the duck to cause a remnant to arise to to cause us to uh, become that army that we've been preaching about and talking about uh, that Zephaniah army of standing shoulder to shoulder and and working together that in time army that's rising up um, to break every chain and I just believe that that's us today and so I'm going to do what I normally do in the book of Esther chapter 4 I'm going to share one verse of scripture out of the book of Esther I'm going to give you about 30 minutes to find it and if you can't find it go to the tablets of contents <laughs> that is the table of contents uh, I heard a preacher say the tablets of context one day and I was like Lord help him Jesus help him but let's get there and we'll go to that one verse and we'll read that one verse uh, my attention of to those of you who are watching those of you that cannot and have not been able to get back to the house of God just yet I want to encourage you I want to bless you and then I want to calculate or incorporate uh, those that are in the houses of God today next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday and many people are gonna want to get back to the house of God for Pentecost Sunday but we're gonna do things strategically and wisely uh, physical separation the CDC uh, regulations PPE when needed and those type of things have got to be uh, honored but I'm grateful to God that in the city of Jacksonville we've been able to come up with a formula of 25% of our auditorium capacity or a maximum of 150 people gathered if your auditoriums are large and over 650 people that would push you past um, that number so we've kept it at 150 around our city so that we can do our part in, in, in keeping this thing in check and then we'll add and we'll increase as as the numbers stay and go down and move and as we amongst ourselves um, realize that we can come together i tell you what i've been in costco's and been in um, home depot and walmart i refuse to go in there just hundreds and hundreds of people in there they don't seem to have a problem um, with what's going on so why should the body of christ be fearful when we do things right and we come together and do what we need to do I'm on the mayor's task force and advisory and I've been meeting and zooming and listening to the numbers in Jacksonville and I want to also say to the people who live in Jacksonville God has been good to us God has blessed us tremendously we are way below anything there have been no breakouts outbreaks in first responders to police department restaurants grocery stores none of those things the daycares that have been opened a whole while there's been no outbreaks our numbers are going down and down and down and I believe that because um, I'm here so I want to thank God for that <laughs> I believe it's because there are people here when the French Huguenots landed on the first coast they declared this area of the nation of the of the state of Florida as a place that Jesus would be Lord over they declared the discovery to the glory of God and I just believe that history has it that I believe I really believe that God honors people that dedicate things to him what you dedicate to God I wish Hannah was here she'll tell you God will use it for his glory so I thank God thank God for it Esther chapter 4 verse 14 you should have had it by now Esther 4 verse 14 for you if you remain completely silent at this time relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews or the people of God from another place but you and your father's house will perish yet who knows 
whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this come on y'all yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this from the subject today it's our time it's our time now father thank you for this thank you for this opportunity thank you that it's our time now and we bless you and honor you and appreciate you in jesus name amen amen put those hands together for the word of the lord that sounds so good i know you've heard me quote this verse and present commentary on this passage many times and i'm gonna tell you why i do it because it's loaded there's so much in just the last portion of this verse yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this what it does is it suggests to us that there are things in life that are designed specifically for maybe a certain person but specifically and definitely for a certain people and so there are certain people that god have used over the years to show his mighty acts god has worked with and god has lifted out of the sea of people that live on this planet god's always had him a remnant he's always had him a people and there are just certain people that god expects to respond to certain of life's crises so this worldwide crisis and this shutdown i believe is one of those things do you know that there's not one person alive that has any experience at what we're going through right now this is a hundred year event there's no one alive that can we can call on the phone and say tell me how you went through this nobody we can text nobody uh, that we can consult there's no book that we can read that can give us what to do to deal with this the only book that we can read is the word of God and I believe that the word of God has the answers can you say amen, amen. so we've been disassembled for quite a while now and there have been no real meaningful gatherings to talk about and now I personally believe and I prophesy that God is calling the troops back together I really believe that now God is assembling a remnant God is assembling a people who have been processed now and who are ready to come back and do his bidding I believe that there's a need to begin to regather but I believe it's strategic I believe that there's a strategic regathering and yet while we're regathering there's still a lot of people who think that the people of God ought to just stay home ought to just lock down not to begin to meet with one another to stay away from any kind of public gathering but whenever I'm in the grocery stores or driving down Florida's highways and byways when I look over at Walmart's parking lot and Home Depot's parking lot and Lowe's parking lot and Costco's parking lot or when I stand in the line at the pharmacies or when I stop by our own restaurant with the lines of people wrapped around the walls and the faithful servants and cooks and servers and line workers and managers doing their jobs and when I see our office staff during the week faithful showing up every day to handle the essential affairs of the church and the kingdom and when I look out and see the food and the clothing ministry outreaches that have never stopped since this pandemic began this pandemic has as has, has happened to us but we never stopped feeding the hungry and clothing the naked I think about those people who say we should not attempt to gather and just stay home until all this is over and done and it makes me think about this passage in the book of Esther that's how we got here verse 14 says for if you remain completely silent at this time relief and deliverance will arise from the for the Jews from another place but you and your father's house will perish yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this somebody's gonna catch this at home and get this listen carefully if God has a calling on your life then my friends by now there ought to be some restlessness there ought to be some boredom you ought to have some insomnia you ought to have some kind of conversation with God asking God what is it that you I'm supposed to be doing at this hour 
at such a time as this. If you've ever been born again, you've got to be asking some questions. God, why did you save me? And what is it that I can do? And what is it that I can say? God, I know that you don't want me just to sit down because nobody that I've talked to has said that they're ready for this virus, that they were ready, that it, nobody said they saw it coming, nor has anybody said that they're equipped to handle it now. So just put yourself in that category. And to be honest, I'm saying that's a good thing. God doesn't expect us to have the strength nor the ability to handle the perplexing challenges that await us not just in the world to come, in the life to come, and in our time to come, but right now. So here's what he expects of us. Isaiah 26, 4. You can't trust your own strength. He says, trust ye in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. I'm not trusting my ability to handle this. I'm trusting in the Lord forever. Jehovah is my everlasting strength. Other people like Paul and uh, were faced with things too great for them uh, to bear. And so here's how they handled it. And I want to learn from them. Definitely, they didn't handle it in their own strength. Second Corinthians 12, 10 said, that is why, for Christ's sake, Paul says, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then am I strong. His strength is made perfect in my weakness. So today's message for all of the people who don't think they're equipped to do anything at this hour, it's for you. Those of you who don't think that the church is strong enough or equipped to be of any assistance at this hour, this message is for you. People who just don't believe that they have what it takes, you don't even feel worthy to be used by God right now. I'm come today for you. I came in here today to remind you that if you've allowed the devil to make you think that this way, to make you think that you are hopeless during this darkest hour in our generation as the believers in Christ, I'm telling you, you will not just be on lockdown, but I'm telling you, if you don't change your attitude soon, you're going to be with locked jaw because the devil's trying to lock our jaw. Let me explain lock jaw. Lockjaw is essentially a disorder that prevents the mouth from opening properly. It's the inability to fully open your mouth. That's what the devil is doing in this pandemic. He's giving folk lockjaw. He's trying to keep the redeemed from saying or doing anything. So here's what the command is to those who have been redeemed. Psalm 107 verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord open their mouths and say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. This whole chapter in 107 is about how men should not be quiet, knowing that God hears us when we cry out to him. If you read the chapter, they cry out to God and God hears them. They open their mouth and God fills their mouth. It's our job just to remember what he has done done and not get locked jaw. Oh, that men would give thanks unto the Lord for this is good. Thanks unto God for what he has done. We can't become afraid and hold our peace right now. God's power and God's ability to deliver us who open up our mouths does something to the enemy that we need to take a look at. And we need to make note of this. When we open up our mouths, when we give God thanks, when we bless his holy name, Psalm 107 verse 40 2 says the upright see and rejoice at what God has done but all the wicked shut their mouths yeah y'all missed that we can give the devil locked job we can give the enemy locked job our strength to do anything comes from our ability to open up our mouths oh you can't sit there quiet and sheepish at this hour you got to open your mouth God looking for some witnesses God looking for some testimony God looking for some people that ain't a scared that ain't a shame of the gospel Psalm 8 and 2 out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have ordained strength 
or praise because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger the word there in the king james that you might steal the avenger it's out of the mouth of babes praise is perfected and when we give god praise even in the midst of our storm it steals the avenger when they sang praise ye the lord for his mercy endures forever in the valley uh, in Jehoshaphat's day the Bible he's done for you and then let it be known let the redeemed of the Lord say so those who have been redeemed we ain't scared we ain't scared we might be a little nervous but we ain't scared for my intention today is to try to get you to recognize and believe that if you are redeemed if you are called of God and if you love him with all your heart mind soul and strength that God can and will use you mightily right now I'm talking today I'm talking this very moment I'm talking right in the midst of this worldwide crisis my job is to get you to believe that if you're called of God and love him that this is God's plan for you if Esther 414 who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this Pentecost Sunday is next week we'll see how the people of God went from fearful to fearless when they opened their mouths and called on the Lord John 20 and 19 says on the evening of that first day of the week when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews Jesus appeared unto them you might remember and then from there he said now go tarry you in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high he already told them but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you so they were locked in the room and Jesus says go to Jerusalem I'm gonna meet you there they prayed and they prayed and I'm sure if you ever been in a prayer meeting you know somebody's singing somebody's praying I wish Paul and Silas were here somebody's praying and somebody's singing even at midnight which is the darkest hour the darkest moment in a person's life they were praying and they prayed and they waited and they prayed and then a sound came from heaven good God Almighty the whole room was filled and they all were baptized in the Holy Ghost clothed in tongues of fire sat on everybody in the room's head and whether they were praying or not ready or not they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and then God immediately used them to witness to the people that came to check out the noise good God Almighty they were used immediately they went from being fearful locked in a room opening their mouths praying to being now used might let me read it to you Acts 2 verse 1 and when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and begin to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance and there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews devout men out of every nation under heaven now when this was noised abroad the multitude came together and were confounded because that everyone every man heard them speak in his own language and they were all amazed and marveled saying one to another behold are not all of these would speak Galileans they said but how then do we hear them speaking in our own languages the works of God instantly you got to see the point I'm trying to make instantly when they were filled instantly when they were calling on the Lord instantly when they were praying and worshiping instantly God showed up and instantly God used them this simple people stepped out of hiding and they begin to turn the world upside down they were on lockdown but now they're free because of the power of God in their lives and they turned the world upside down they teach us it's okay to be a little fearful for a little while as long as you're obedient because he gives the Holy Ghost to them that obey him go tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power when they did what he said 
he sent back the power of God. They were afraid, but they were obedient. It's okay to be a little fearful, but please be obedient. If God calls you, man, if God tells you to go somewhere, go there. God is reassembling us strategically as we can pray together. We can praise together. And I got a few people in here today, and they don't understand the intensity. They don't understand what it was like to be in an empty building preaching to nobody, preaching to red chairs, preaching to a hollow house. And when they assemble back together, some people haven't caught it yet. It is a move of God. It is a strategic coming together of the people, the remnant of God. God is assembling people. He wants to hear what kind of praise we got now. He want to hear what kind of prayers we have now in the house of God. He wants us to be endued with power from on high. You can't come back and sit and look like a gator by the lake any longer. You can't come back to God's house and not know that it is he that have kept us it's he that have blessed us it's he that is watching over us oh you owe him some praise on your way to the house today you should have been praised out on the way to the house today you should have been shouted out on the way to the house today you should have sung it out oh that men would give thanks unto the lord for his mighty acts and his wonderful works toward the children of men so god is reassembling us strategically so that we can be endued with power from on high. Remember, he gives that Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost to them that obey him. So I know everybody that says they're Christians are not Christians. I know that everybody who's professing to be followers of Jesus are not following him and are not filled with the Holy Ghost. So I know everybody ain't gonna understand why some of us feel some kind of way about holding our peace and doing nothing at a time like them. You got folk who are members of churches who still think should be home and not walking and not out and not doing things that, that we were doing before this happened. You even got some preachers scared to death that something's going to happen to them if they go and, and stand before their people, meet with their staff. And yet, those same people, you see them at Walmart and you see them at Publix. Come on, y'all. And you see them out at the restaurants trying to get a little something to eat. The devil is a liar. The people of God, help me, somebody. God is creating for us a Goshen in his house now. He protects his house now. I just believe that God is strategic. Mordecai said this to Esther. He said in verse 14, if you keep silent at this time, at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the people of God will arise from some other place. But you and your relatives will die. Think about that. The fear of death. That's what has people bound. But Jesus came and removed the fear of dying. Now, death in the scriptures is not always physical. And the law of first truth teaches us about death right now because it was said to Adam that the day you eat of the tree in the midst of the, of the garden is the day you're going to die. You're going to surely die. And, and Adam died, but he died a spiritual death. And I believe that folk who don't understand their role and who don't feel a need to do anything at this moment, you're dying a slow death. You're dying. We, we, can't, we can't let our y'all we, we can't let our praise die y'all we can't let our commitment to God die y'all we can't let our fellowship die y'all we can't make let our commitment to giving die y'all we can't those things that are requisite to our faith prayer praise worship fellowship a study of the word witnessing soul winning giving those type of things we can't let them die now we got to get creative and figure out a way to keep doing those things we got to figure out a way just because we're not together don't mean that we don't need to keep it together and we need to keep it together lest we die we can't let help come from some other place because if we don't do what we're supposed to do we got other religions we got cults we got the jehovah witnesses we got the mormons we got atheists we got scientologists we got all kinds of folk out here waiting to pick some people off saying where is your god where is he what where do you go but if you keep faith in god if you keep praising god if you keep you keep praying to god if you keep fellowship with each other if you keep giving if you keep witnessing if you keep so with it if you keep doing those things that god has called you to do won't no demon in hell be able to deceive you or pick you off or make you doubt who your god is my god is still god and he's god all by himself he's with me in the midst of my storm he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me i am his own mm, he's on the boat with me i might be fearful but he's on the boat with me 
and eventually he's going to get up and say, peace, uh, be still. He's ready. He's ready. When I'm in my greatest need, he's ready to meet that need. Too many people are right now controlled and bound by what's called the paralysis of analysis. And many of you have heard this. Paralysis of analysis or paralysis, it's on the screen, by analysis. Let me define that for you. Listen to this. This is a scientific term, a psychological term that's so real. It describes an individual or group when processing a crisis, they overanalyze or overthink a situation and it causes forward motion or decision making to become paralyzed, meaning that no solution or can be decided upon. Come on. They look so intently, they overthink the situation to the paralyzes them it is a situation may be deemed as too complicated so a decision is never made due to the fear that a potentially larger problem may arise does that sound for me that, that we don't do anything because of the fear that a larger problem may arise come on y'all it's called the paralysis of analysis you're not getting this with me maybe somebody at home you're getting this that uh, situations can get such that the data comes in such that people become fearful based on the analysis of the data and so nothing is done nobody moves because of the fear of a larger problem that may arise if you make a decision to do something that it might create an issue for something else but it's all motivated by fear uh, come on talk to me here by looking too much at the data by looking too much at the statistics by trusting too much in the physicians King Asa died the Bible said because he trusted in the physicians only he says that when he had gout in his feet he could have called on the Lord and the Lord would have healed him kept him alive but instead he consulted the text says with the physicians only I don't know about y'all but I've been listening to all the data I've been hearing everybody and don't nobody know what they talk about so I'm gonna take the statistics I'm gonna analyze them but then I'm gonna mix it with faith I'm gonna throw God in here and I'm gonna say God I need you oh I need thee help me make my decision help me to move forward help me not to sit still help me not to hold my peace help me not to shut down help me not to act like I don't have a prayer or hope in the world help me not to sorrow like others who have no hope help me God to lift up my head help me to know that you God help me to see the way out of no way help me to know that this too shall pass help me to see the light at the end of the tunnel help me to know that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world God I believe but help my unbelief God give me some signs show me what you want to do with me talk with me and this is exactly what the devil is trying to do at this hour he's given so much erroneous analysis of this coronavirus this COVID-19 pandemic that people are over complicating the matter and would rather sit home and do nothing than to strategize and to figure out a plan to at least continue to do what God has called us to do. Saints have become faint and lazy at the most strategic hour in church history. Saints are on complete lockdown and afraid like the man Solomon speaks about. In the Proverbs, listen to this, Proverbs 22, 13. The lazy person claims there's a lion out there. If I go outside, I might be killed. There's a lion, there's an adversary. For your adversary, the devil, walks about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. We know that we have an adversary. We know that there's a lion in the street. But that don't mean we're going to die. That don't mean it's going to kill us. I wish I had some faith people in here. Here's what God told me to tell y'all we don't need to have faith when this is over we need to have faith right now we need to be able to proclaim some things and speak some things right now stop fretting yourself and begin to decree I shall live and not die and declare the glory of God there's a lion in the street and I'm gonna figure out how to get around it there's a lion in the street but it ain't gonna kill me he's seeking whom he may devour and how can he kill you lack of faith if you have faith the grain of a mustard seed you can say to this mountain and to this giant be removed and cast into the sea and not doubt God told me to speak faith in here today not foolishness not presumption but faith in here today to wake up some people to quicken some folk and to let you know Know that God is on your side remember our text says if we hold our peace 
we will die remember Esther 414 if you keep silent or quiet at a time like this deliverance and relief from the Jews will arise from some other place but you and your relative will die we can't spend the rest of our lives trying we can't do this we can't spend the rest of our lives trying to 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 do what god has called us to do and to be what god called us to be we got to be about it right we got to we got to do what god says that we need to do we got to be what god says that we could be we got to go what god says that we need to go we cannot spend the rest of our lives trying to figure out what and how we're going to do what we do we just got to show up we got to show up and let god do what he wants to do with us tell somebody just show up i mean david just showed up to the fight and, and, and God uh, fought Goliath for him. He said to Saul, uh, I, the battle is not mine. The battle is the Lord. The Hebrew boys just showed up to the fiery furnace. It was God who insulated them and kept them from being burnt alive. You're not getting it. Daniel just showed up to the den of lions. It was God who gave the lions lockjaw. God can give the enemy lockjaw. Our job is to just show up. God knows who to send home. If you show up, God knows who can fight and who cannot fight. When you show up, God knows who's scared in here, who's scared at home. 32,000 showed up when Gideon decided he would get up and fight. But God chose 300 that would lap water like dogs. Did y'all get that? Gideon's focus was on the army, not on the crowd. And some of us need to remember this. When it's time to come back completely, it ain't going to be about the crowd. It's going to be about the army. It's not going to be about the masses. Come on. It's going to be about the army. It's going to be about the elect few. It's going to be about those chosen, a few good men, a few good women. Come on. We got to focus on those who will fight who are ready to fight oh there's always a riffraff there's always a mixed multitude in the crowd everybody don't have faith but God is going to raise him up a remnant remnant have a responsibility there's some people that are going to be so grateful for what God has done for them in the crisis that when they come out of the crisis they're going to say God here I am use me in the kind of way you want to use me I believe that God is looking for faith at this hour not folk who are waiting on things to get a little better to have faith but folk who have faith right now <laughs> listen listen to this ecclesiastes 11 and 4 says this if you wait for perfect conditions you will never get anything done if you wait for everything to get right everything to line up everything to get better you'll never get anything done we know these are perilous times and these are times in which we are living and, and, and hopefully uh, thinking about what God has allowed us to go through. And I know many of you have pondered that. But, but we are allowed by God to be here at this time right now. Everything that there is in our lives, we got to remember, is by design. We, we got to remember that God's timing is impeccable. He even positions us to hear the right word at the right time to get us moving. There's not an accident. This, and there is no accident. I want to say this publicly too. There is not a, it's not an accident that Donald Trump is president. It's not an accident that the world's economy is on the way to collapse. It's not an accident that this disease now plagues the entire world. Shoot, it's not an accident that marriage in this country has been redefined. It's not an accident that self, self sex trafficking is a pandemic in itself. It's not an accident that pornography is a pandemic itself. Itself. It's not an accident that drug use is a pandemic itself. And it's not an accident that new designer drugs are destroying the lives of people before they can ever get started in life. A pandemic has been amongst us all the while. It's not by accident, but God knew it the whole while. And the Lord has allowed all of this to happen on our watch. 
on our watch no other time in history have things been so jacked up in particular in the United States of America but now all over the world we're in groaning all the creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God every generation before us has had to deal with things that occurred on their watch this is our watch this is our time God knows what he's doing this is different but we should never feel like we're hopeless we should never feel like we're helpless in the times in which we are allowed to live I'll say it again I believe it's all a setup and God is going to get himself some glory God has painted this picture for us and he put us in the frame he has put us on the canvas Ecclesiastes 311 says true God made everything beautiful in itself and in its time but he's left us in the dark so we can never know what God is up to whether he's coming or going yes God has set this thing up but he doesn't want us to know what's gonna happen here or there or next it won't take any faith but we walk by faith and not by sight we don't know whether he's coming or going whether it's gonna stop or go whether he's gonna move or not move our job is to stay steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord I'm telling y'all there's a reward for your labor you're on stage you have your role in this production but you're not aware of, of how it's really gonna end you know the ending's good you just don't know when it's gonna be over have you ever been watching a good movie and even though the movie's good it's long you know you had a place to go you had places to be and you're sitting there hoping that it'll be over but you're also enjoying the movie anybody ever been there I'm enjoying life but there's certain things in life I don't know when they're gonna end I hope they're gonna be over but if it keep on going I've already paid the price I've already given my heart to him him, and whatever he wants to do do it with me I can't put God on my schedule uh, God doesn't work for me I work for him uh, and God is the one that calls the shots I wish I had some but God has allowed us to be alive at this time in the history of this planet for a particular purpose and I think it's time we believe this and it's time that we get on with our purpose if you are saved then you know that you've been born again for such a time as this this if you could not if you could not have been born at another era at another dispensation or in another time this is our time you you you, you couldn't have been born back in the days of the horse and buggy you, you were born right now at this time so stop complaining stop whining nothing in life has been unfair to you nothing nothing that you've already gone through uh, was designed to kill you uh, but some of y'all just need to look back on how you got here yeah if, if it was designed to kill you it would have killed you you thought at the time that you how many y'all ever thought at the time that something that came to come to ruin your reputation to ruin your life even to snuff your life out but if you survived that then you know that it was not designed to kill you and what won't kill you will help you if you survived this pandemic then this was not the way that you were supposed to go out if you're healthy right now praise the Lord if you're blessed right now give God the glory if your temperature is right then thank be to God if you're not shivering in your body if you don't have a chronic cough if you're not out here and and you don't know what tomorrow is gonna hold but you feel a sense of peace and and safety if you're in that Goshen if you've been practicing the guidelines as best you know how then thank God God, but don't sit there and wait till everything is over you've got to be on stage and doing whatever it is you're supposed to be doing right now but there's a way that you ought to be acting while this thing is going on I'm closing with this God has kept you alive up to now for such a time as this if he has kept you then you have a responsibility and I believe that it's our time now we have come into the kingdom church for such a time as this and I know sometimes it feels like you're helpless even like Esther it, it actually looks and feels like all odds are against you but listen to me I believe that this may just be your time to do something even when it looks as bad as it looks Daniel 7 I love these verses verse 21 as I watched this horn this this kingdom was waging war against God's holy people and was defeating them until somebody say until until there's always an until things were going this way until this was happening until I was feeling this way until 
until somebody came in here today you were feeling some kind of way until you heard this word today verse 22 until the ancient one the most high came and judged in favor of his holy people then the time arrived somebody said then the time arrived then the time arrived for his holy people to take over the kingdom until then the time arrived I'm telling y'all that there comes a time when the saints take over my friends this is the will of God for our lives that we be the head not the tail above and not beneath he created us for this purpose to be fruitful and to multiply to replenish to subdue and to have dominion God made his man to reflect his image in the earth his dominion his kingship God gave his man authority over the things in the earth yes man fell but God now has redeemed man unto himself and not only when things were going good with his man in charge but God wants us to know that we are in charge period for in Luke 10 19 Jesus says behold I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you and when he went to the cross he spoiled principalities and powers and made a show of them openly triumphed over them and he gave us he handed us that he reckoned us righteous and just and he gave us authority he gave us the keys come on talk to me here as I am so shall you be in the earth he gave us intercessory power he gave us authority over demonic power we can speak to principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places he came down to earth sure and through 42 generations Satan doesn't even know how he got here he fell as lightning and Jesus said that demons yes are subject but our real joy come from knowing this our names have been written in the Lamb's book of life and if your name has been written in the Lamb's book of life nobody can pluck you out of his hair you belong to him you have eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord so I'm glad that the leadership of this church ain't wimpish and passive I'm glad that you you we ain't sitting around with locked jaw afraid until and, and, to, and to unite and to give God some praise I'm glad somebody said well I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord I believe God's smiling today I believe God's happy today I believe we blessed his heart today I believe that he's looking down at you the Bible said he sits in the heavens and he laughs this is a laughter of joy when he sees your praise when he sees your hands lifted he said lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless me good God Almighty God gives us an order to how we ought to behave ourselves when we come into the house of God I'm so excited I'm getting ahead of myself because I just feel like running but I'm gonna hold my peace because I'm gonna let the Lord fight the rest of this battle for me I I haven't felt my best during this whole time. I've been working overtime during this whole ordeal, but I'm a follower of a radical Galilean. I'm a, his name is Yahshua Hamashiach, Jesus the Messiah, the great deliverer who came to set the captives free. God put us in this community to be a light, and I refuse to let our light go down. I refuse to put our light under a bushel. You've been dropped into this community to educate and to empower power and to emancipate people that have been held captive by fear and ignorance for years just like some of you were but now look at you you are washed you are sanctified you are justified and we ought to be redeeming the time for the days of evil I came up on the property the other day and I saw Elder Keith out ministering to a homeless out there handing the man a glass of water in the Florida noonday sun and I took pictures of it and I sent it to a group of pastors who were want to discuss what we ought to be doing at this time and I hope they're watching I sent it to a group of pastors who are saying well I ain't going back to January June I ain't going back to September and I shot this picture to them and I pulled it up on our zoom call and Elder Keith was handing the transit a glass of water whoever gives a man a glass of water in the name shall you got to hear what I'm saying to you when Lord when did we see you thirsty when did we see you hungry and we didn't take care of you when you didn't do it until the least of the year but God a pandemic was going on but yeah there's still the least of the year but God the whole world was in a crisis yeah but I called you to serve the greatest among you is the servant of all of you and if you don't yeah. Yeah. we're here 
to impact the lives of people who otherwise would never come in contact with the anointing. Sit down, y'all. That first time I've said that in months. We're not here to build our own kingdom. We're not here to have church and only worry about the budget and our facilities. So many people right now are merchandising this moment, building e-churches, gathering other folks' members, making promises, following up with people who are not assigned to your local church. That's how the churches fall apart. We can't just add anybody to the local church without vetting them, without processing them. I wish I had some help here. We've got to know that the Lord adds to the local church daily, such as our being saved. We need to be getting people saved right now, not sheep herding. We need to be getting people delivered right now, not trying to get more members. We need to get people that don't know God to get to know God right now. We got folk on lockdown. We got a captive audience, so we ought to be preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to church folk, to folk who thought they were saved, to religious people, to traditional people, and to auntie and cousin and Ray Ray and Pook and them who ain't got no mind to serve God. That's why you got to turn your houses into sanctuaries. That's why you got to put this word on and make them sit there. Put it on that breakfast and make them eat while they're listening to the word. Slide this thing on at night. Come on and put the gospel. Put some worship music on and turn off all this garbage and all this stuff that's played out here that's messing up the minds of our young people. This is your time to be mama. This is your time to be daddy. This is your time to be good parents. This is your time to turn your house into the house of God. To turn your house into a sanctuary for the glory of God. I'm supposed to tell somebody here today that this is your time. Everything you've been through in life has prepared you for this time. Every success, every failure, every mishap, every embarrassment, every threat, every committed sin, every assault on your life, every assault on your character, on your health, on your wealth, and on your mind has been for you to rise up and take over the kingdom for the people of God shall possess the kingdom forever and forever. It's now time for you to realize you got to wear everything like a loose garment and that the only thing that matters is that we seek first the kingdom of God. God and his righteousness like Esther it's our time just like when Jesus came the first time Galatians 4 4 but when the right time or the fullness of time came God sent his son born of a woman subject to the law God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children and because we are his children God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts prompting us to call out Abba father now you are no longer a slave but God's own child and since you are the child or his child God has made you his heir God has adopted us and made us heirs but not just heirs join heirs with Jesus Christ access to the throne of God we have God's richest grace at Christ's expense and so now we can come boldly unto the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need he's a very present help in our time of trouble in our time of need we don't have nothing blocking us nothing keeping us the veil has been rent we can come because his blood was shed once for all on the mercy seat now nobody I am an heir of God. The earth is the laws, the fullness thereof, the world and all them, every planet, every, every, every continent, every people group, everybody. God made them out of one blood, made he all the nations. And so they're crying on it for him in China now. They're crying out in Asia now. They're crying out in Russia now. They're crying out all over Europe now. They're crying out in South America now. They're crying out in Australia now. They're crying out in New Zealand now. They're crying out in Antarctica now. They're crying out all all over the world help us Lord save us Lord people are calling on the Lord that never called on him before glory be to God so let us call on the Lord seek him while he may be found call on him while he is near listen to me this next move of God is going to be with people who know this and believe this it's going to be people that can grab a hold of this type of message it's going to be led by common folk i've been prophesying this folk that y'all don't know but you're going to see them because they won't sit down it's the people that stood up in the midst of this pain that God's going to use next. Oh, they're going to come in. They got wounded. They're going to have purple hearts. They got issues. They're going to have medals of valor. 
because in the midst of this they rolled up their sleeves they put on their PPE mask they put on their gloves and they went out and they served the first responders in our hospitals the nurses that care and the doctors even the receptionists at the doors of these institutions of health uh, I believe God has a special plan for them I believe that God is going to increase them I prophesy to all of those who reached out and helped somebody during this time uh, get ready for an overflow get ready for God to open up the windows of heaven and pull you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive I knew people that were thinking about getting out of the nursing profession because of the pandemic they didn't even want to do nursing anymore but something in them said get up and go you've been called for this what would a soldier be like that was called to defend his nation in the, in here and abroad and all of a sudden the war breaks out and they go I don't want to fight you shouldn't have never signed up and those of us who are Christians who are now sitting around talking about you don't want to fight you shouldn't have never signed up you need to understand that we have to endure hardness as good soldiers of Jesus Christ am I propagating am I promoting you acting the fool and getting up and go no I already told you you got to be prayerful and practical but you can't sit there like a gator by the lake you can't sit there and act like God ain't good you can't sit there and act like God not in control you can't sit there and act like God doesn't want to use you right now this is our time this is the only time we have he can come tonight will you be ready yeah. folk y'all don't know that catching more hell than a little than a little bit has been the lot of a lot of people but you'll never know it because they open their mouth and shout anyhow you, you, you can't you, you got to call the devil's bluff he ought not to be able uh, to know what's in your hand folk y'all don't know that Folk that were giving a dime out of a dollar when they were broke during this pandemic. You don't understand that part of their harvest is going to be elevation. You, you, you don't understand. I'm telling y'all, God's getting ready to move some folk from the back to the front. And like Gideon, he's going to tell some of the other folk to go home because you ain't ready. He said, let everybody that's afraid go home. And, 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 and they took off and left. 2020, I'm closing, has come to reveal who God has brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. But keep in mind, Esther went through a purification process. And this quarantine is a purification process. I'm being purified. Uh, you're being purified. I'm being tried. You're being tried. But after you've been tried in the fire, you're coming forth as pure gold. This fire is not to burn us up but it's to clean us out. Man, I feel like Mordecai today. You've been through uh, a whole lot but you've been brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. He told Esther she had to go before the king on the behalf of her people, but she hadn't even been in the king's presence. And I know some of y'all ain't been in God's presence. You haven't felt God. You haven't seen God. You haven't even, you haven't had conversation with him. Uh, but I want you to know that, 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 that during this whole time, uh, of you not being able to get to him because of circumstances and thing and I'm talking to a few people you know who I am because when you're overwhelmed you shut down and so you've allowed the enemy to shut your mouth to give you lockjaw but I want you to know that he still wants to talk to you and I want you to know that regardless of where you are right now he still wants to use you he wants to give you a chance before you come back to his house he wants to give you a chance to make up your mind it may not be much it may just be handing somebody a glass of water in the name of Jesus but whatever it is you're gonna have to act in such a way that you didn't allow this to give you lockjaw that you didn't allow this to shut you down you didn't allow this to keep you from ministering to somebody God wants to use you in your dry season in your dry spell and I know you've done some things that have kept you from his presence even but 
that ought to be the very reason why you ought to let the Lord use you because he's been good to you in spite of you he's kept you in spite of you he's provided for you in spite of you so right now you ought to say God you've been so good to me what can I do for you God what will thou have me to do Mordecai calls for a scribe y'all and sends Esther a message he says think not within thyself that you will escape Esther you might be a queen but you're still a Jew again we can't forget who we are we can't forget whose we are God called us out of darkness into his marvelous light you were once lost but now you're found you were blind but now you see and because of that don't you forget don't think that because he saved you that he didn't want to use you to save somebody else he saved you to save somebody else Esther Esther if you all together hold your peace deliverance is coming from somewhere else we cannot hold our peace he says Esther who knows whether you have come into the kingdom for such a time as this ladies and gentlemen women and children boys and girls this is our time this is the only time that we have this is the moment that some of us have been waiting for we've got to take the limits off we got to take off the constraints Noah had his time and for 120 years he built an ark he was a preacher of righteousness and God used one man to save the entire world he and his family made it on that ark the storms came the floods came but they endured it because they obeyed God and God kept them by his grace Noah found grace in the eyes of God somebody in here today somebody listening at home you think God can't use you there's no flood that's going to kill everybody prophesied but God has sent a pandemic into this land this disease is encompassing all over the earth and God can find somebody and give them some grace and they can build an ark for somebody somebody in their neighborhood somebody in their house somebody on their job I wish I had some help in here Jonah had his time and he didn't want to go and preach to Nineveh but finally after being spit up by a fish he spoke eight words and the whole nation turned the whole nation repented and God blessed the whole nation I wish somebody would think and think with me that God looking for somebody that'll stand in the gap looking for somebody that he can use that can that can spare the United States that can spare China that can spare Russia it only takes one is there anybody here that's gonna let God use you right now Ezekiel had his time and Ezekiel spoke to those dry bones and said dry bones hear the word of the Lord dry bones came together and then the Spirit of the Lord blew upon them and they became an exceeding great army we've been scattered like those dry bones we've been bleached like those dry bones we've been disconnected like like those dry bones but I hear God saying dry bones hear the word of the Lord come back together stand on your feet like an army let God use you let God bless you I wish I had some help in here Jesus Jesus had his time he came lived died was buried and rose again the third day according to the scripture Jesus came he defeated death hell and the grave Jesus came and he gave us the victory now all we got to do is have faith in him and now he says I had my time now my body it's your time it's your time it's our time what you gonna do everybody you know get up on your feet sitting in the house of God at this time you ought to be ashamed of yours get up on your feet and just thank God that you're able to stand in this house today kept we've come into the kingdom for such a time as this this is our time it's the only time we have we can't complain about it we can't murmur about it so many people were overwhelmed and they started listening to every report and everybody. They started listening to demagoguery and they got caught up in the political infighting of the news channels. They got caught up in the Democrats and Republicans, black and white. 
They got covered up in the economic status of people all here in the United States of America. I'm doing ministry right now in Africa. I'm doing ministry right now in South America. I'm talking to pastors around the world who live in other countries who don't know what we're talking about. The only Trump they know is that the last Trump, the dead in Christ will rise. They're not concerned about our little squabbles here as we are. And we've allowed circumstances and stuff to make us myopic. Even though we should be concerned about our communities and our neighborhood, it should be our communities and our neighborhoods and not somebody else's community and somebody else's neighborhood. We've gotten on the bandwagon with other people and we're fighting their fight and we're being used by the enemy to cause division even amongst ourselves. You know how many people told me today, you having service, Doc? You're having some people come in. How many, Doc? That's about as many as that's in the lobby of Walmart. About as many that's in Publix the other day when I went in there. About that many. Well, what you gonna do, Doc? Oh, we got chairs spread out. We give them a little social distancing. We're gonna have thermometers at the door and check temperatures. Only people that are coming are people who come in by invite. So we know who everybody is in the room. And they've made the commitment to let us know that they've not been sick, haven't been sick. They've been quarantined. They've been doing right. Oh, Doc, I never thought about it like that. Oh, you haven't? What have you been thinking about? You've been thinking about hiding. You've been thinking about staying away. You have been thinking about what you can do to make a difference. You have been thinking about how you can strategically get people back together. You have been thinking about how you can be an army again, how you can come back together again. That's what I've been thinking about. I've been thinking about it without jeopardizing people's lives. I've been thinking about it. And I'm so glad I'm on those, those calls and I'm getting the real numbers and the statistics so that I can make a wise decision so that I can consult God and not just the doctors. And I'm so glad the few people that are in here today that you chose to get up out of your beds and to come out here in the house of God today and to glorify God. And if you will, will you give God the biggest shout and the biggest hand clap? We, uh, we came in and we took out whole sections of our auditorium and our seating and we spread out chairs. We spaced them six to eight feet apart and we allow people to come in, not have to slide down aisles and stuff, but just to walk in and find a seat. We have people at the door with sanitizers, people that have opening the doors with gloves where the people don't have to touch the knobs and all this kind of stuff. And it's not that we're afraid, it's not that we're fearful. It's just that we're citizens of this planet, we're citizens of this community, and we're following the guidelines and we're doing the things that we know we need to do. But the difference in us and a lot of people is we're mixing faith with our science. And we realize, glory to God, that God is a keeper, God is a healer, God is a deliverer, and God wants his house to be the house of prayer for all people. And we've come now back to Bethel, the house of God. And I'm so grateful. Those of you that are home, that are watching, I just want you to know that the day is coming where you'll be able to experience what some of these people have experienced today. The day is coming where you'll have your chance to come back. But in the meantime, listen to what I just said to you. This is our time. You could be doing something. You can be doing something right now. You could be productive. You don't have to scr scroll and troll Facebook all day long and sit there and watch what people are saying and listening to the opinions of men and, and connecting and building your brand. You don't have to keep doing that. You don't have to be sneaking and going around. And No, no, you can be productive. You can do something. You can say something that ministers grace to hearers. You can edify the body of Christ. God can use you. Even if it's online, he can use you. But he also can use you physically. You can find somewhere where you can plug in something that you can do to help. You can make some phone calls and encourage some people and speak the word of God to them. You can turn your house into a sanctuary. Begin to praise God and worship him and get back, at least get back connected to God. I told people this morning, don't come back to the house until you first go back to God. Yes. You go back to God, then you come back to the house of God. Because God's going to turn this thing around. I really believe that with all my heart. You believe that? Come on, this song has kept me during this time. And I believe it's going to keep some of us in the times to come. But before they sing it, if you're out there 
and you want Jesus to be Lord, you heard me preach today. And yes, I, I felt like hollering and screaming and preaching today. Yes, I did. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Sound the alarm on the holy mountain. Cry loud, spare not. And so God has called us to, to encourage. He called me today to, to edify you, to build you up. To say God can still use you. God can still turn you around. God can still bless you. If you believe that, then say amen. amen. Say that. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. Everybody God, turn come it around. God, turn it around. All of my hopes in, all of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Breakthrough will come, come in the name, the name of Jesus. All of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for this day. All of our help, all of our hope, our power comes from the name of Jesus. God, I believe that you can turn this thing around. You can use us in the midst of it. So thank you, God, for letting us know that this is our hour. This is our opportunity. Help us, give us creative, witty inventions. Help us and give us ideas and concepts by which we can be your light even now in the midst of all of this darkness. We thank you, God. We love you. We honor you and appreciate you for finding us faithful, putting us in this, your ministry. And God, help us not to quit now. Help us not to have lockjaw, but help us to open up our mouths like the redeemed. Let us say so. Let us let the world know that you're still king. You're still glorious. You're still mighty. You have the power to save. We thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. There's a number on the screen for salvation. You can text it or call it at 1-855-874-4529. I believe God's going to turn it around. I really believe he's going to turn it around. Thank you for being patient with me today. Thank you for allowing me to be me today. And thank you for hearing this word today. Now, James said, don't just be hearers, but be doers. Find that something. Realize that God still wants to use you. Realize that God knows what we're going through. We don't have enough. We're not even worthy, except through the blood of Jesus Christ. So know that if God has delivered you and saved you, he delivered you and saved you for a reason and for a cause. And realize that we ought to be redeeming the time because trust me, these days are evil. And so whatever you're supposed to be doing, do it. Do it within means. Do it under the auspices of your local leadership, your church. I'm praying for pastors everywhere that you might be ignited, that maybe you might take a page from us today and you might become strategic in regathering of the people, that you will realize that God wants to bring us back together, that this is not the way it's going to be forever, that God is raising up an army, that he's purging. Don't expect everybody to come back even. Oh, I was standing here saying, God, if I just had this crew right here, I could start over. I could do some great things. I remember with nobody but me, my wife, and my two children. And you gave me a vision, and you had us to where we knew that you were able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. So, God, do it again. If you did it once, you can do it again. So, God, I thank you for the remnant. I thank you for your love for us. In Jesus' name, he's going to turn it around, somebody. He's going to turn it around. If you believe that, just say, he's going to turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn Everybody it around. sing. Come on, sing. God, turn it around. God, turn. God, turn it around. Oh, God, turn it around. God, turn it around. See, all of my all of my hope is in the name.
is up to something. He is up to something. God is doing something right now. He is up to something. He is up to something. God is doing something right now. He is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something. Say right now. Right now. He is healing someone. He is saving someone. God is doing something. Right now. Right now. He is moving mountains. Make it away. We're going to let our viewing audience go. And we're going to fellowship and hang just for a minute. But I want you all to know that God loves you and he has a wonderful plan for your life. He really does. You are somebody because God don't make no junk. And God wants to use you for his glory, believe it or not. Right in the midst of this time, we thought of ways in which we can continue to serve God. And we as a local church have continued in those ways against all odds. And I believe that when the Son of Man comes and when deliverance comes, he's going to see faith when he shows up here. What about your house? What about your ministry? What about your life? Have faith in God right now because it's our time now in Jesus' name. So until next time, see you Wednesday night right here. Same channel, same station, wherever you're watching. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, give we him pray you were blessed by this worship experience at the Potter's House. Make sure you share this word Come with on. a loved one. And remember, there are four ways that you can give. First, through text giving. Just text the word GIVE to 904-601-1695. Follow the prompts and you will receive a confirmation text thanking you for your gifts. The second way is online giving. Just go to tphim.org and select the giving tab and follow the prompts. And also you can mail in your tithes and offering by sending it to TPHIM at 5119 Normandy Boulevard, Jacksonville, Florida 32205. And lastly, you can give through our Ministry One Church app. Download the app and type in our church name and follow the instructions to give. Once again, we thank you for your continued generosity to the Potter's House. And until next time, remember to share this message and stay connected by following us on Facebook and subscribing to our YouTube channel at TPH Jacks. And may God bless you and keep you until our next digital gathering.